wonderful food at home that's nutritionally balanced and also tastes great, but more importantly, something that's really easy to do. And one thing I love doing is just kind of cooking from scratch. And I want to teach you those little tricks and tips that make it really easy for you as well. I'll tell you a little bit about kind of my um, whole food ethos and my journey to where I got to now. So I wasn't always a chef. I started my career as an engineer. I then worked in a corporate environment for many, many, many years until I finally decided to. That change came from not just my love for food, but also learning the importance of taking care of our body our body and, and how much nutrition will into all of this and maple um which is um like i said a healthy eatery that i founded we have a wonderful team that supports me um and of course in celebration of international women's week just wanted to give a big shout out to the team chilla val um naomi nadia all the wonderful women who work alongside me i think you know um it's great to see that we're seeing so many inspiring leaders throughout this week's um events and it's really about the now woman so i'm absolutely thrilled to be part of it now like i said it's been it's been a long journey being an engineer to kind of working in a corporate environment to finally working as a chef and you know not everyone has had the opportunity to do this so really like i said today is really about giving you guys some tips and tricks and feel free to drop questions into the panel um, I'd be happy to answer the questions as we cook along and I'll be cooking for kind of cooking and talk half an hour of the questions or we'll have some time at the end as well now in terms of what we're gonna be cooking today if you look at the comment section um, you'll see we're doing a five ingredient balance bowl so I want to break that down for you so there's a few different things going on so first of all what is a, a balance bowl so when we think about um, diet and nutrition, there are so many fads and trends um, out there. You know, there's obviously the paleo diet. If anyone, you know, give a little wave if you've done a paleo diet. Um, there's obviously detox programs like juice cleanses and things like that. And, you know, at our, um, at Maple, we certainly offer a lot of these foods that can support with detoxification. We have a lovely range of cold pressed juices that we do as well. Um, and yes, I encourage those things, but I think a lot of times we should be striving for overall health and in a sustainable way. I think sometimes with these diets, they work well if we're about to go on a summer holiday or a big event coming up, but really we want to look at living in a sustainable way. So the balanced bowl or the balanced meal or the balanced plate, as you call it. Um, great, Whitney, thanks for bringing that up, you know, the paleo diet. So. I think, like I said, there's lots of different diets um, and the balance one is something that I think from children to adults to elderly people, everyone can follow. So it takes a little bit beyond your five a day that a lot of people, you know, are used to. So again, five a day is a basic one, but balance eating is just as easy. So what is a balanced meal? Um, if we look at overall nutrition, there are effectively six things our bodies must have. Um, so we need vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and we need water. So these are kind of the six pillars of nutrition that we absolutely need um, to be, you know, sustain in a very healthy body and, and lifestyle. Out of those things, we're gonna be able to get a lot of our vitamins and minerals from our vegetables. Um, so it's really about, and I know you hear this all the time, it's really about eating the rainbow. So it's eating all the different colors. And as you can see here, um, I don't know if you can see, here, here in my kitchen, but I have a few things that are kind of um, in the background, just some like fruits and veg. And really it's about kind of trying to find things that are, you know, across the spectrum. That way you'll ensure you get your beta carotenes, your um, phytonutrients and all those, you know, vitamin A, B, C, D, um, E all the way through. And it's really about eating different colored fruit and veg. So that's kind of where we get our vitamins and minerals. Now, when it comes to proteins, it's really important and I cannot 
push this hard enough, it's really important to eat protein with every single meal, um, whether that be breakfast or a snack or lunch or dinner. And I think sometimes you might find it challenging if you're a vegan or trying to switch to a more plant-based diet, or you might find it challenging just to get protein in things like breakfast, because you might be eating things that are more carbohydrate based, like cereals and bars and breads and pastries and things like that. So there's lots of options we'll talk about later in terms of how to get your protein in your diet, but protein with every meal ensures that, you know, we can rebuild our muscle for healthy body function, but also it really helps us feel fuller for longer. So if anyone struggles with feeling peckish and hungry all the time, it could be that you're not eating enough protein throughout your diet. Now, another one, so the fourth one is um, carbohydrates. So we need carbohydrates in our diet. And again, with purpose, if you're doing a paleo diet, you might be actually cutting that out. But overall, from generating energy and being able to have the energy to kind of keep going with your day, we really need to ensure we have carbohydrates um, in our diet as well. And that can come in two different forms. So we have our simple carbs and our complex carbohydrates. The simple ones are things like white pasta, white rice, white bread. A lot of delicious ones, but unfortunately provide little to no nutritional value. So we want to stay away from those. So when we talk about balanced diet, we actually want to look at and focus on the carbohydrates that are packed with fiber. What are those? So these are things like whole grains. Um, these would be things like you know butternut squashes and your sweet potatoes, things like that. Your ancient grains, so quinoa. Um, uh, buckwheat, um, coarse and wheat. So a lot of these grains as well. And even like to a certain extent, like some of your rices, like your red rice, your black rice, your brown rice, these are all more complex carbohydrates that have fiber. And what that allows is the energy releases slowly over time. So my favorite example is if you eat a pack of Haribo gummies, which I love, you're going to get an immediate sugar rush. That's going to give you energy in the short term. But if you want a long term sustained energy um, level, then you want to look at complex carbs. And then, so if we talk about those kind of main elements, and of course, fats, and today's, um, you know, I won't go into a lot of details about fats, but we do need to eat lots of good fats. And these come into, come from like things like nuts and seeds um, are good sources. Avocados have really good fats, eggs. So thinking about all that, um, we're going to talk about our balanced meal. So our balanced meal is going to, if you think about a plate, um, you're going to have 50% non-starchy vegetables. So these are things like broccoli, kale, carrots, peppers, which we're going to cook with today. Um, are all things, and half our plate should always be that. So it's things like spinach as well, celery, cucumber, um, cabbage, all these, what cauliflower, all these things are lovely non-starchy veg. You can eat them raw, eat them cooked, eat them fried, eat them any way you want. But the more veggie you have on your plate, the more nutrition, those vitamins and minerals you're packing into your diet. Now, we also want to think about having uh, the other half of our plate. So our other half of our plate is going to be split up into two things. So you already have half a plate, which is non-starchy veg, a quarter of our plate, which is going to be our complex carbohydrates I talked about earlier. And then our final quarter is going to be uh, protein. So with protein, if you're vegetarian or, or vegan, lots of great options. You know, you have your seitans and your tofus. Um, you have your pulses and legumes. So that's things like chickpeas, black beans, butter beans, lentil. These are all excellent sources of proteins. I always say nuts and seeds, whether that be in a, a nut butter or like just seeds sprinkled on top or a handful of nuts. These are wonderful sources. Obviously, if you eat meat, then it would be meat. I would I would say generally um, lean poultry is a really good option. So today we'll be using turkey mints, um, an organic turkey mints, which is a great lean option. Um, red meat is absolutely fine. Ideally once a week, we wanna limit our red meat intake. Um, and then fish is also a really great source. So in our balance bowl today, we're gonna to aim to build you know, half of our plates, which is gonna be peppers. Um, and that's our non-starchy veg. A quarter of our plate is going to be our complex carbohydrate. We're gonna be using chickpeas from a can. So don't feel like you have to cook chickpeas from scratch. And the last we're gonna be for our protein, we're gonna be using um, our minced turkey. And actually the chickpeas not only are, are a carbohydrate, but it doubles up as an extra serving of protein as well. So that's the intro to our um, about balanced plate and balanced eating. And really, this is the best way to keep you energized throughout the day, making sure you get your nutrition in your food and obviously just enjoy a really nice, warm, comforting bowl of food.
Um, okay, so I have a question from Whitney. Great. Um, why do we aim to limit um, red meat? I think it's a big thing for women, but we don't understand why. So one of the main reasons is a lot of red meat has um, animal fat in it, and it's quite often it's bad fat. So overall, when we think about getting our fat sources, it should not come from meat. So that's one of the, the main reasons. Um, second of all, it's also that a lot of um, red meat, especially things like beef can contain a lot of toxins the way it's farmed. So although traditionally it may not have been bad, but over time what's happened is a lot of red, red meat has been farmed in a non-sustainable way. So it's not just from a sustainability, but also from a nutritional level. So those are kind of like the, the two main reasons um, that we want to avoid red meat. It's really kind of the fat and, and the way it's um, farmed, unfortunately. Um, great question. Um, cool. If anyone has any questions, keep them coming. Um, and I wanted to now introduce you to the uh, dish itself. So the five ingredients. So what five ingredients are we going to be working with today? I already spoke about the peppers. Um, we're going to be using chickpea, a turkey mince. Um, we're going to be using a yogurt. And the yogurt, for those who are um, shying away from dairy, I'm totally off of dairy at the moment. I have a very... Um, fussy five-week-old baby who seems to be possibly allergic to lots of different things so as one of the things of course i'm cutting out dairy at the moment so your yogurt can be either a natural um completely natural yogurt please avoid like the sugar types of yogurts the fruit based yogurt so always um start with a natural yogurt you can always add a bit of sweetener like honey or maple syrup if you find it's too hard to eat just plain yogurt um but the sugary ones like the fruit ones are packed with sugar so a natural yogurt again it could be a soy yogurt coconut yogurt or just a natural cow's yogurt and then the fifth ingredient we're going to have um, is we're going to be working with some uh, some herbs so today I've chosen uh, dill it could be any herb and that's kind of the beauty of this five ingredient dish so while we will be working with um, dill we could have easily swapped that herb with thyme you could have easily swapped that herb with basil you can swap it with parsley um, really any herb you like will work well with this dish Similarly with the chickpeas, um, I'm going to use chickpeas. I like chickpeas. My husband eats chickpeas. He doesn't eat, um, you know, all the different pulses and legumes out there. But you can feel free to swap this with lentils, cannellini beans, navy beans, black eye beans, really any beans or lentils and pulses that you like or that you have available um, in your house and try to experiment. And that's why this kind of balanced bowl is really about mixing and matching so that you don't get bored of eating the same thing but you're always going to work with the same five elements it's going to be a meat of some sort so turkey mince it could be chicken breast it could be lamb mince um it could be some beef for the week um it could be tofu if you're going vegan swapping this and then again with the herbs so really you can do lots of things and then last but not least so I, you know i said five ingredients i lied a little bit we are going to need a little bit of seasoning so seasoning salt pepper and if you like any spices, you can always add that on top as well, like paprika or cumin or a bit of chili flakes. I love a bit of heat in my food. All right, so let's get started. We're going to be working with um, one can of drink. So I have 250 grams of turkey mince. And again, where possible, try to buy organic meat if you can, whether that be from the butcher or the grocer. Um, and, and then we are going to also have um, 200 grams of yogurt, um, our fresh herbs, and we're ready to go. One really quick thing, while you can kind of um, focus and take a look at the second, uh, the Adria One camera, that's where I'm showing you kind of my setup. So one thing to always think about, um, and this is something you learn as chefs, and we were, you know, constantly doing at culinary school is just to have a nice clean working environment so you want to make sure you're kind of clutter free your chopping board stays nice and clean um, one thing i love doing is putting either a kitchen towel wet kitchen towel underneath my cutting board or i buy these little non-slip mats to make sure my cutting board's not sliding around that's quite often when you'll injure yourself with your knife i have a a very very sharp knife and again it's something that anyone who really wants to get into kicking i would highly advise getting a good quality knife around 40 pounds is a great place to start um, to get a chef's knife so a chef's knife is typically long um, it has a good uh, strong handle and it's quite balanced 
So I would definitely encourage those who want to get into cooking a bit more to get a good sharp knife. And we keep it sharp by um, using a honing stick. And really the honing stick should be used kind of before um, we cook every single time and that will keep your knife um, super, super sharp. So those are just like some, some little um, tips and tricks. And then the last thing is to have a rubbish bowl close by. So I always just take any bowl I have around and I use that for rubbish. And mainly that saves you from walking to the bin. Um, it's a bit more sanitary as well. So I always have a little rubbish bowl close to hand and some um, tasting spoons because I'm always tasting as I cook along. These are just kind of some basic setup things that I like to do. So I'm going to now turn on my pan and again from a crockery perspective on pan side i'm using a non-stick pan today um you can absolutely use a stainless steel as well um but obviously with a non-stick you don't need to use as much oil um and then with uh, a stainless steel one you'll need to use a little bit more oil or we'll have to use a technique called deglazing to make sure the stuff's not stuck to your pan so i'm using a non-stick pan um, the series I'm using at the moment, I really love the Le Creuset. They have really good quality. They are quite pricey, but they last for, for quite a while. So if you're not sure you're going to do a lot of cooking, I would invest in an expensive set of pans. But if you know you're going to cook a lot, and you know, when it's locked down, so a lot of us will be cooking quite a bit, I would certainly do that. So I'm going to get my pan um, kind of medium um, hot. That's kind of, I would say, 75% power. So depending if you're using induction or gas, I have a, a gas at home. Um, so that works uh, quite well and the, the flame is a good heat. So around 75% is what you want to aim for, okay? I'm going to get my olive oil. Um, let's see. And I'm just gonna put kind of one, about one teaspoon of olive oil in the pan, okay? And again, speaking of oils, lots of different oils to cook with the best one really is to use um avocado um if you're going to be cooking at really high temperature and high heat so if you're frying things avocado or um unrefined uh, rapeseed oil is very very good as well if you're doing medium heat cooking you're not going to be frying things so today it's, we're not really going to fry the turkey too much so then an olive oil works olive oil is also great in dressings um and then for anything like if uh, coconut oil is also a good option in terms of like some of the trend oils, like things like that, some of those oils burn really quickly. So you want to just make sure you use that more as like in dressings and, and things like that versus cooking per se. So I've got that um, a bit hot now. Okay. And like I said, I have my mints. So now when it comes to adding herbs, if you're going to be using what we call summer herbs, so if we're using things like dill, the softer ones, dill, parsley, basil, these always should be added off the heat after we cook our food. If you add your herbs now, these kind of summer herbs, it's going to completely lose its taste. It's going to kind of just melt right in. So that's going to be at the end. If you're using your winter herbs, the ones that are a bit harder, so it's things like um, rosemary, thyme, and things like that, you want to cook that herb first. You're going to cook it along with your meats or protein or whatever, because those flavors actually infuse really nicely with a bit of heat. So really, it's kind of a different technique depending on the herbs you're using. Um, yes, yeah, sunflower oil is um, absolutely fine. Um, it's not something from a, um, a quality of oil. It's not necessarily the highest one, but sunflower oil is absolutely fine. Again, using a moderation. The good thing about sunflower is that it has a um, high burning point. So again, like I mentioned, some of those other like specialty oils, we don't want to cook with them because we want to watch out for low smoking burning points. Oils with low smoking points means it's going to start smoking, which causes smoke kind of charring, causes carcinogens, carcinogenic, which is like cancer causing. So I think that's good oil as well for cooking. But if you can switch to something like avocado or coconut or even unrefined rapeseed, those would be like the better options over sunflower. Thank you, Amelia, for um, dropping that question for us. Okay, so now I have my pan um, reasonably hot and I'm gonna put in um, the turkey mint. And again, you can see how this could work with anything. Like if you have even um, just, you know, a, a piece, like some fish, some salmon steaks, things like that. It could be um, a turkey breast or some turkey mint and other lemons. The reason I like using mints is just, it's very kid friendly. I have a three-year-old and although the five week old is not eating anything, I find kids, um, they find it quite a bit easier to kind of get through mints. It's quite more enjoyable for them. Um, and also I find that quite often you can get um, good quality organic mints options as well. So, okay, so I'm getting that going. 
Okay, I'm gonna let that cook off for a couple of minutes. And we're just gonna kind of let that hang out there. In the meantime, I'm gonna get a seasoning. Now, I always get lots of questions about um, uh, salt. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about salt while that's going off. Um, so salt, Himalayan pink salt has been the rage over the last five years, but actually it's um, becoming a more rare and rare natural source. So um, we've now, uh, I teach at the College of Natural Medicine, so we've now switched recently in the last six months to encourage people to stop using Himalayan pink sea salt. It is really becoming um, overproduced and we're really ro um, running short on it naturally. So I've gone back to um, sea salt. Some great questions about inspiration and recipes. Uh, I'll address those later in terms of favorite recipes and inspiration. Oh, wonderful question, guys. Um, so from a sea salt perspective, um, any good quality, Malden, there's lots of sea salt. If you want to support local, um, Cornish sea salt is a big one as well. So sea salt is has a lot more flavor and you need to, um, um, and it's from a mineral perspective. There is a bit more minerals and nutrition in sea salt than table salt. So really from a naturopathic nutrition point of view, we should never really cook with table salt. Table salt is extremely extremely refined. There's no nutrition in it. And so the chef inside me loves adding salt to all my food. The nutritionist side of me says don't add any salt. So you can kind of find your balance. It makes food taste better uh, adding salt. So we want to season. And again, I'm just going to add kind of like about um, a quarter of uh, a teaspoon of flake sea salt. I'm just crushing it um, with my hand. And as you can see, um, this mince is now starting to cook off and we want to make sure we give it enough space so it's not overcrowded. A lot of times when we cook food, it's overcrowded. We end up steaming the food versus kind of um, searing it properly on the pan. So um, we've added a bit of salt to give it some flavor, um, some black pepper as well. I love using a pepper mill. I just find that pepper tastes better and stronger coming from a pepper mill. So I love doing that as well. So a bit of seasoning. And already, I would say the mince in the last few minutes, we're almost at 100% cooked. So we want to make sure with things like poultry, it has to be completely cooked um, versus red meat. You can go a little, little bit of, um, a little bit more underdone if you want. But obviously, you want to cook it thoroughly. So that's cooking off um, quite nicely. I'm then going to prepare my chickpeas. So with my chickpeas, you can eat them whole like this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set aside a couple of chickpeas. I love doing this. Um, and I'll talk about plating at the end. And then the rest I'm actually going to mash. And I like mashing the chickpeas because it gives it kind of like a bit more of a comforting feeling. Um, I guess it just requires a little bit less chewing on our part. So I love giving my chickpeas a little bit of a mash. So I don't get it to all the way um, a puree. And again, you could do that if you puree it. And also quite nice, but I like giving it a, a light mash. And what I'm going to do from there is add a little bit of olive oil. So the recipe calls for two teaspoons. So I'm going to add a teaspoon in my um, mince, and then I'm going to do a teaspoon here. Okay, and then I'm also going to add from my 200 grams of yogurt, I'm going to add about three heaping tablespoons of yogurt here again, just to give you that kind of creamier um, consistency. Okay, so give that a good mash. I love doing this with a black bean recipe. I really love kind of the deep flavors that black beans have. And again, as I'm cooking, you'll find as any chef, you're kind of tasting and seasoning as you go along. And I think that's kind of the foolproof way. You know, you don't need to go to culinary school to be a good chef, you just need to like to eat. So as I kind of cooking, I'm always just tasting and trying to make sure um, Everything is seasoned nicely with salt and, and if you like pepper as well. So a little bit of salt really goes a long way. I'm just gonna kind of blend that in all together. Okay, now that I have that kind of a light mash. Okay, so that's ready. And, and meanwhile, my turkey is really cooking along nicely. Um, we're just making sure kind of all the um, meat is thoroughly cooked through. And again, that's on a medium high and you might wanna use a high heat uh, depending on, on your stove top. I'm just using it. Okay, fine. Now we have like mashed, um, I'm going to pull it up on that. Maybe this camera is better. Okay. Um, you can see we kind of have this like nice little mash. I have my um, taste 
two spoons nearby. I'm gonna give it a, a little bit of salt, adds a lot of flavor. Okay, so that's all ready. So that's my carb um, of my balance bowl, my carbohydrate. My protein is going really nicely. And then what I'm gonna do is finally just make the um, dressing. So the dressing is a quite a simple one. And again, you can get very, um, lots of variants, but with the yogurt based, I find it's really nice, especially natural yogurts. It's packed with probiotics. Probiotics help us maintain a balanced gut health and gut health really is the drive behind our immune system. So especially um, in times like this, you know, it's really about kind of getting that gut health going. Natural yogurt is the best way. Feel free to obviously swap this natural yogurt with tahini, which is a sesame seed, um, um, butter, uh, peanut butter, almond butter, all the nut butters and seed butters are a really good option for a base. And if it's too thick, if you find that using peanut butter, almond butter seems too thick, just add water. Adding a bit of room temperature water, you can mix it around until it looks like a dressing consistency. And that's your base. So lots, instead of buying store-bought dressings, which can be expensive and filled with nasties, sugars, chemicals, preservatives. I'm always reading labels and I'm always shocked to find what are in some store-bought um, dressings and also just the price that, you know, it, it costs to, um, to do that. And the idea too is don't make dressing fresh every time you need it. Make dressing, you can store it in your fridge three to five days and you have dressing throughout the week. So don't be afraid to store your dressing. Just make sure you don't contaminate your dressing. So a lot of times people say, oh, my dressing gone moldy. Nine times out of 10, it's because we lick the spoon and dip the spoon back in. Now, some questions a bit about um, kind of just um, finishing off the flavors of this. So in terms of, you know, that question about where I get my inspiration from, um, now is a great time to actually talk about that because we're going to be talking about kind of the flavoring that we can add to our dressing. So we are going to use a dill. Um, dill is obviously a very um, popular herb across um, lots of Western cuisines. So I grew up in Canada in the great white North. I'm Canadian, you can tell by my accent, I'm not English. Um, and so my parents um, are Chinese by um, ethnicity. So we always grew up in, in an environment where that, whereby they always love going um, shopping at like the local fishmonger and the local butcher. I think it's a very ethnic thing. So I was always surrounded, I was luckily surrounded by kind of by default around um, the more organic meats and things like that. And then my parents always kept a garden. So when we were growing up, you know, they're, you know, my parents, um, you know, couldn't go anywhere. They had to stay home and take care of us. They spent a lot of love and care in terms of cultivating their garden. So in our garden, we always had different things growing. So you know, my parents taught me a lot about cooking with Asian ingredients. So things like miso, oyster sauce, hoisin sauce, um, soy sauce, um, your Asian like spices as well, five spice, ginger, garlic. My husband is Indian. So when I started dating my husband, the first present, his um, mom, so my now mother-in-law gave me was a little um, pot with a lot of Indian spices. I don't know what kind of uh, messaging she was trying to give me, but this is before I trained as a chef. So she gave me all these wonderful spices. So I use a lot of spice in my cooking as well. So all your turmerics, your cumin, uh, sala, which means mixed spice. So all these things can be added into this, this yogurt based dressing. So you can easily have added soy sauce and some sesame oil as one variant. You could have easily done some cumin and garam masala or in turmeric into this. So you can really have some fun. Like I said, I'm going with the fresh herbs today. Um, so I'm gonna get, uh, chop off just the top of my, my um, dill, okay? And again, a question I always get is, can we eat the stems um, of our fresh herbs? Try it. If the stem is not too woody and too fibrous, certainly add it into your dish. If you find it's too woody and fibrous, then don't add it. So there's my dill. So I'm gonna add a bunch of dill into my dressing, okay? I'm gonna give that a quick whirl. Again, I'm gonna season with a bit of salt and and a bit of black pepper. Now my turkey is nicely cooked through. I'm gonna turn the heat off. Um, and so here we have our um, yogurt dressing. Give it a little mix. Okay, I'm gonna take some herbs and run it through my pot over here. And again, because this is a summer herb, if those, anyone who missed it, um, summer herb, Um, 
Okay, it's coming back on now. So I'm gonna run that through and that smells wonderful. I love the smell of dill, like summer picnics and being outside. And I think summer is finally coming. Um, okay, I have that. And then we're ready to eat. So I have my dressing ready. I have my mince ready. I have my mashed um, chickpeas and really, I'm just gonna kind of focus on plating my dish now. So this recipe is made to serve two. So I have my two bowls set. And when it comes to plating, um, the other thing I like about these bowls is that you can serve, obviously the protein is warm. You could have warmed your chickpeas through as well if you want to, but also you can have it cold. And again, you can prepare these chickpeas ahead of time. And it's still a really nice, um, nice dish. So when it comes to plating, um, I do a lot of food photography um, for magazines and things like that. I do a lot of um, styling for the maple, my own business. So when it comes to food styling, without going to a ton of detail. Um, it's really about building the elements on a dish to make it look appealing. And who doesn't love a good Instagram? So we start off with our biggest items. So anything that's large in size should always go on the plate first. And then we build up to smaller and smaller and smaller um, items. So even when it comes to garnishing your dish, start with a big garnish, color composition. When you think about it, you want to have a balance. Uh, you kind of want to be able to show all those different elements on your plate. You don't want one item overwhelming the dish and covering everything else. So I'm going to start off with my um, chickpeas. So I'm going to put that again, kind of in the balance plate anyways. We're talking about one quarter of our balance plate. Our balanced meal is going to be carbohydrates. So I'm going to kind of put my chickpeas into one quarter um, corner of the bowl. And I have uh, these lovely pink bowls that I'm obsessed with at the moment. You can imagine as a chef, we end up being, we hoard uh, plateware all the time. So that's my chickpeas. Okay. And then I'm going to do um, a quarter, which is my protein, and that's my turkey mince. Okay, and that's all so good. I am certainly getting hungry. Um, and again, like I said, have, you know, um, if it's not doing, if it's not dill, it could be, you know, some rosemary in the winter, which would be really, really lovely. Like rosemary is such a nice lamb instead of turkey. Rosemary would be really, really great as well. If you're doing fish, it could be a little bit of um, parsley that would go really, really well with um, some fresh uh, fish. Okay, so I have my quarter. And then um, last but not least, I'm going to have my peppers. So I'm just going to cutting board a quick little wipe. Okay. And then I'm going to have my peppers. So hopefully you guys can see this. I'm just going to do this a little bit. Okay. And again, this is kind of like I'm having the kind of summery ish bowls. So things don't need to be piping, piping hot in, in the summer. And again, in the winter, you might want to have everything hot. So in terms of cutting peppers, um, always cut off the tops first, and then in order to minimize waste, you kind of just peel off um, peel off the stem and discard that, okay? And then you basically pull out the centers from here. Again, the white part of the pepper is totally edible. It's just, it can be a little bit bitter. So it's up to you if you want to um, eat that or not, okay? And then we have our other uh, pepper, remove the stem, pull out the core. Okay, and that's really it. And that's, you know, in this way, the way I'm cutting it now, you're really minimizing waste. Now from um, a shape perspective, I'm gonna do just uh, nice little cubes of peppers. And this is where you can swap this with cucumber. You could be doing um, carrots and celery if you like that as well. You could be doing a bit of baby spinach, um, a mixed like leaf or green. You could be doing some um, cooked like mushrooms possibly. So there's kind of like lots of options on this front in terms of getting our veg ready. The peppers, again, I really like the crunch of it. I like the color that it adds to the dish as well. Um, but other things that work well too could be um, sliced cabbage. I'm really into purple cabbage these days too. Like cabbage is one, it lasts forever in your fridge. I, I think sometimes I have cabbage sitting in my fridge for like a month and it's totally fine. Um, and you don't have to worry about waste. And it's also very inexpensive too. But also at the same time, if you think about it, purple cabbage is wonderful. It's full of antioxidants. Anything in purple is high 
fully um, full of antioxidants, highly nutritious, um, and again, um, adds wonderful color to our dish. So I'm just finishing cutting off this pepper. Okay. And again, um, lots and lots of veg. And what I find is like put vegetables on your plate, you're gonna end up eating more veg. So really having vegetables around, whether that's fresh or sometimes even frozen is, is it's really, really helpful. So I have my peppers, okay. So I'm gonna divide that into my bowl and just finish that off, okay. And again, you could choose, um, you know, some, you know, bro you know, you could steam some broccoli and cauliflower. Um, that would work quite nice. Some courgettes, you know, roasting some courgettes. I love roasting like mini courgettes. Okay, that's our bowl. And then to finish things off, really, I'm going to add my dressing and your dressing, um, you know, feel free to kind of, you can either drizzle it across your bowl um, like this, or you may want to kind of have it, um, you know, one scoop sitting to the side. Okay, so I'll kind of do the two options. Okay. And then we're going to garnish. Like I said, when it comes to garnishing, we're going to build big garnish upwards towards our little garnish. So we have our big garnish, which is our chick, our whole chickpeas. Again, just to add a little bit of um, texture on top, which is quite visually um, quite nice. So that's my biggest garnish. Then we're start working upwards to my smaller garnish. So I have some dill, okay, that we're going to sprinkle throughout. Okay, it's our dill. Okay, and then um, last but certainly not least, just a little bit of again black pepper or here maybe those who like heat some chili flakes. Okay, and so there you have it. That's our um, five ingredient bowl. I'm just trying to see which camera is better. Maybe here. Or maybe you guys can see it better over here. Uh, maybe this camera. So you have our five ingredient bowl. We have our half a bowl of non-starchy veg, our peppers. Um, we have our quarter chickpeas, mashed chickpeas, and our quarter turkey, and then our lovely um, yogurt dressing. So that's it. Um, I there were a few questions that came up. Um, you know, feel free to hang around and ask more questions. Um, but it was wonderful kind of welcoming you to my home kitchen today. It's a Friday and I hope you guys are looking forward to the weekend. Um, you know, it's great. Like I said, I'm really honored to be kind of celebrating this um, International Women's Week um, with Women of the City um, and the Now Women. Of course, uh, please also stay in touch uh, with myself. It's um, Adria underscore Wu um, on Instagram. I'm always kind of on it. And as well, follow us, my Maple and Co. Um, that's my business as well. Feel free to stay in touch. Lots of recipes coming through all the time. My team does a really good job continuously, like just churning out wonderful tips, tricks, and and, and content. Um, and and that's really it. So I'll answer the um, last couple of questions. Um, you know, in terms of it being a hobby. So I've always loved food, um, and when did it go from hobby to becoming something serious? So I think after seven years of working as a consultant, um, traveling a lot, partying way too much, I was in Dubai at the time when I decided to quit my career. Um, I had just kind of gone down this path of um, thinking I wanted to be a certain way, but I don't think I was truly enjoying my career. Like I thought I wanted to climb this corporate ladder. I thought I wanted to um, do that. But actually what I found was that I, I just kind of was no longer in love and passionate about what I did. And I was not happy waking up every day. You know, I kind of dreaded going to work and things like that. So it wasn't easy, but I finally decided to pull the trigger. Um, I saved a bit of money from working, um, quit my job, went to culinary school and have not looked back since. So that was about um, nine years ago now. So um, I think a lot of people have different journeys, um, but I think it's really about connecting and prioritizing your own needs. I think men and men, you know, everyone is kind of always thinking about, you might be thinking about others and not putting yourself first, but it really is about kind of understanding really what makes you happy and, and, and a bit of planning. Look, it wasn't like I could just, you know, quit my job on a whim and do that. So it did require a bit of planning, but 
um, you know, I am where I am now and I love it. So I spend my time um, managing my business, uh, Maple & Co. Um, I present on TV. Um, I teach at the College of Naturopathic Medicine. I do lots of talks like this for corporate clients and private clients. Um, and it, it's a full-on schedule, don't get me wrong. There are moments of um, tears of happiness and stress throughout it, but um, like I, I've, I've never looked back um, since. So I think someone else in terms of, um, uh, were there any, there was another question that came up. Um, yeah, so recommendations. Hi, Madeline. Thanks for tuning in. Um, okay, what are, your what are your tastiest recommendations for someone wanting to diet and cook themselves? Meal plans that, do that don't take too long. Okay, so in terms of um, my recommendations would really be kind of following this balanced bowl format. Think about it. Whenever you cook, you only need five ingredients. And it's also about balance. For me, I would instead of doing it for two, I would do it for four or six, and then you kind of eat it throughout the week. So you can kind of plan ahead if you if if that makes sense. Um, so that's one thing is just cooking at home. The second thing is just introducing herbs um, and spices. Those are things that are not only um, nutritious, um, um, but also really tasty, um, and they have no calories, you know, or fat, you know, eating some fresh dill or parsley, there are no calories really associated with it, having a bit of, you know, cinnamon added to your food, like in the winter, I love doing like a winter spice of like cinnamon and nutmeg. Um, and there's really no kind of, you know, fat added to it or anything like that. So instead of adding oils to enhance the flavor of our food, that the other thing is the method of cooking. So um, in terms of methods of cooking, you know, do a lot of, you know, roasting in the oven. Um, that's a great way to um, diet and, and cook. So it's not just about steaming or boiling your food. Really try to get comfortable with using your oven and roasting things. And the way I roast things always is I roast it on the highest heat possible. So if you can get your oven to about 200, 220 for 10 minutes, it'll char your vegetables. And when you char it, it gives it a caramel flavor. So it naturally releases the sugars from the vegetable that you're cooking. So I do that for always for 10 minutes first, so whether that be Brussels sprouts or carrots, and then it's on really high heat, and then bring it down to 180, which is your kind of baking roasting temperature for another 10 minutes usually. So most things kind of cook around 20 minutes. So I would say from a taste perspective, get comfortable with spices, you know, go to your local um, ethnic store. So I, I live in like the Maida Vale area. So where I am, that's actually, I'm quite close to Edgeware Road. And there are always tons of um, great new spices I'm discovering in these like Middle Eastern shops. Um, and then in terms of um, get, yeah, getting the herbs and then cooking, like I said, really cooking for yourself, really try to um, batch cook. So again, you know, um, instead of cutting two peppers, maybe cut four peppers leave it in the fridge, then you have cut peppers, something can add to let's say you do a, a takeaway, you know, you're, you're tired, you do a Chinese takeaway, you're getting a fried rice, for example, instead of filling your whole bowl with just fried rice, try and put half your bowl with peppers and half your bowl of fried rice, mix that up together, and you'd be surprised how tasty that still is or like noodles, I love noodles. Um, but eating a whole bowl of noodles can be not that nutritious, although tasty. So what I do always when I do noodles is, you know, if I have some, you know, broccoli, um, in, in the in the fridge, I'll just throw that in the oven quickly for 10, 20 minutes. And then I have my takeaway noodles, for example, similarly with curries, like if you're a big curry fan, as well, we love curries in our house. Again, you know, don't be shy to buy some of these things already made, but have these vegetables and things ready to go in your fridge washed cut that you could simply add to any dish really is um, a great way. And the last tip really is to if you're trying to diet, um, see if you can find a friend or a group. I think sometimes dieting alone is, is quite hard. So it is, you know, find someone who can keep you on your toes. Um, you know, have a friend or someone that you check in every day. And all you do is just take pictures. Nowadays, it's so easy. So it's really about just taking pictures. It's amazing if you know you're going to be sharing your food with someone, you'll really think twice about what you put on your plate. Um, and and the last thing is um, uh, doing like a fasting diet of some sort. So um, at the college where I teach, we definitely recommend fasting we naturally fast anyways because we sleep um so we should always fast for a minimum of 12 hours every day so that could be 7 p.m to 7 a.m 8 p.m to 8 a.m so always try to fast it gives your body a chance to reset and 
detox and digest the food we've eaten. So if you can do it for longer, that also works. So um, thanks. So next question. Um, um, great. So what would be your advice to aspiring chefs or food bloggers? Um, great question. So obviously for me starting off here um, to where I am now, when I came to London in 2012, I didn't know anybody. I had you know no friends. I didn't really know anyone. And so in terms of building um, your profile and like networking, I think it's really been about taking advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. Um, you know, whether that be um, doing something that you, you don't feel comfortable. So networking was one thing that I still don't love doing. So walking in a room, I remember one of the big networking events I went was, um, you know, owners and founders of restaurants across London. And, you know, I walk in and not surprisingly, 99% of the people in there were like, you know, white male. And here's this like, you know, five, five um, Chinese girls younger back then as well. So it was very, very intimidating. I think sometimes you do need to network put yourself out there and talk to people. And so that's the first step is just network, meet people as much as you can. Um, cold, cold email people. The number of times I've cold emailed people to connect with them, half of them don't say anything. Some of them might be polite and say no, but there will always be a handful that want to collaborate and work together. So it's really about putting yourself out there. And then secondly, that ties in with this is share your passion and love with other people. So I think sometimes um, people are starting off, they might be, shy or hesitant to kind of share what your ideas or what you're trying to do, but share with people. And that's really, you know, word of mouth is where you're going to get there. So don't be shy. You know, sometimes I might even be afraid. What if I fail? What if it doesn't succeed? I've shared it with everyone. It's real. But at the end of the day, with our failures, we're going to learn and we're going to grow with it as well. So those are kind of the, the two things I would say is network, 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 meet as many people as you can, go to events like this ask questions and then, um, and share. And then really the third thing is find a mentor. So um, I'm so thankful for help me and continue to help me over the years. Um, I also mentor all the time. So in a normal environment, I usually have two mentees or two interns always working with me. Things have slowed down since I gave birth recently, but I always have, um, I'm always mentoring and I'm always being mentored. So try to find a mentor in your industry, someone who's gonna take you under their wing, who's gonna show you the ropes, connect you with people, um, you know, and again, like that might be a cold email process, but try to find find a mentor who will help you. Um, okay, and a few more questions. Um, where do you see yourself in the next two to five years? Um, the food industry has been greatly impacted by the pandemic. What does the future of the industry look like to you? Okay, so absolutely. Um, so where I see myself in the next two to five years has changed fundamentally because of this pandemic. So March, um, first, second week of March, we had just opened our eighth Maple store in London. Woohoo, everything's going great. By the third week of March, the UK government had announced national lockdown across everything, as we all remember. So my business went from eight stores generating revenue, employing 40 staff to basically employing nobody um, and closing all eight of our stores pretty much overnight. It happened over a span of three days. So it was very, very shocking um, and also extremely stressful. Um, but that's also given me the time to reflect and think about where my business is heading, um, what I want to do in life generally. So to answer that question, where do I see myself to the next two to five years? Um, I've really loved becoming a mom to my two wonderful children. So obviously continue with that. I think with Maple, um, it's my baby, it's my business. We'll continue growing that. But actually, um, we're just about to launch a second brand in the UK. It's a falafel concept called Operation Falafel. Um, lots of you know similar principles to maple. It's all about healthy, balanced eating, um, and a lot of vegan and vegetarian dishes. So we're launching that brand in the next few years. And I hope to be adding more brands to um, our platform. You know, I'm, I'm, we're looking at investing into a gluten-free a bakery business as well that could really complement maple which is salads juices smoothies um operation falafel middle eastern falafel foods and then adding like a bakery um and i'm not sure where but i think certainly um i love food and i certainly want to be adding kind of more and more brands to our platform so that's kind of like the next um two to five years and in terms of the future food industry um absolutely Consumer habits have changed, without a doubt. I think last year in March, April, I thought, oh, this is just a, a, a temporary change. But 
know, their eating habits have certainly changed. I think people at the moment really want comfort foods. They want to be, um, you know, feeling good about it. There's so much stress around us these days. People want to be feeling good. So I think comfort foods has been a really, really big one. And actually, um, I don't want to share too much, but Maple is launching a, a whole new product line uh, of comfort foods. So please um, kind of stay tuned. So we're doing that. I think that's the trend. I think healthy eating will, will absolutely continue. I think if anything, a lot of people have learned to cook at home during the pandemic, which I think is great. Um, people will learn how to use raw ingredients. People will learn how to reconnect with food. I think that's only going to kind of come back that kind of healthy eating trend. And of course, like food deliveries to home, I think that's going to continuously grow. I think people have learned to kind of um, enjoy using their home space, eating at home. And I think that more and more options will kind of um, come online. But I still think some of the um, indulgent things will be there i think people still want to treat themselves if we are going to go out and i think people do want to eat really good food if they're going to actually go out meet other people um and, and have a good evening so that's kind of um you know the future uh, of the f and b industry i think absolutely it's going to grow i think it's just going to grow in slightly different directions i think people are always going to want to eat and people are going to want to take care of, of their bodies and also have good food so yeah great question um i think um, that was it. Wonderful questions, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. I think if, um, if I missed anything, feel free to, um, ping it off, uh, now. If not, then I think, um, that will probably, uh, be the end of our session. It was really great, like I said, to welcome you to my kitchen, to spend the last, um, hour with you guys. Hi, T, just seeing you sing. Hello. Um, um and yeah actually to leave us going to be on tomorrow make sure you join her for the brunch session she was one of my interns i think two years ago now maybe even three it's it's been it's been a while she came with me on tv and, and helped me with um, some of the Sunday brunch stuff i do so it's good to see taliba as well um on this on this session so thank you very much and um thank you for um everyone at uh, women of the city um and look forward to kind of staying in touch um, and hearing about your journeys. Thank you very much, guys.